We're on Daf Kufayin Vav Amidalef, the last lot of Vav Amidzia. Hotzia lav ksav yado shuhu chayiv lo gobe minachasim b'nei choren. What the Mishnah had told us is, presenting an IOU that doesn't have witnesses' signatures is not a valid star in the sense that it cannot collect from the chasim mishubadim, from encumbered property. Right? <coughs> property that the debtor had already sold. It's only, it's only good to verify that there was a loan, because it's got the guy's signature, the debtor's signature on it, but you can only collect from the chasim b'nei choren, unencumbered property. So, ba minei rabba bar nasim rab yochanan, huchsa ksav yado beveist in mai. What would be the halacha if the malva takes this IOU without witnesses' signatures and goes with the lova to Bastin and has the Bastin verify that it is indeed the debtor's signature. Would that upgrade this to a bona fide star so that you can now collect from Nechasim Meshubadim on this uh, on this paper? So Amar Lei, Afal Pisha Huxak Savyoda the Bastin Enagova Elamin Nechasim Benechorin. So the response was no. Even if it's ratified in, or verified and based in, that's not a, a, it, it doesn't change its status. It can still only be goiva from the chasim b'nei chorin, not from encumbered property. So Masiv Rami Bar Chama, so he challenges from the following brisa. Shlo shagitin pisulim v'imnese savlat kasha. So the first part of this brisa will not be germane to our discussion, but you see how it's relevant in a moment. The Brisa in Maseches Gittin says that there are three types of, get, of gets that lechatchila cannot be used. But bidiyevit, if they are used and a woman remarries and has children from her second husband, those children are kosher, they're not mamzerim. So ve'eluhein, what are they? Case number one is kosav b'ksav yado ve'enolavedim, that if the husband writes a get using his own handwriting so we can verify that it belonged, that he was the writer, presents it to his wife in front of witnesses, but there are no witness, witness signatories in the shtar, so that's kosher. Yeshal avedim vein bozman, another example that it's l'chatchila is not kosher, but b'dievet is, is that if it has signatories but no date, and finally, yesh bozman vein bo ela if there's a date, but there's only one witness instead of two. Hare elu shlo shagitin pesulim. So these are three examples of L'chatchila being pasul, v'imnitsei savlad kosher. But if she marries, b'dievet, and has children from the second husband, the children are kosher. Rabbi Elazar Omer, afo pi she'en olav edim, elo shenasnu, shenasan olav, if ne edim, kosher, the gova minachasa mishubadim. So Rabbi Elazar disagrees with one of the three cases. He says not only is this one case b'dievet kosher, but it's even l'chatchila kosher. He says that a shtar does not require signatories. A shtar, as long as it's given in front of witnesses, remember, Rebbe Lazar says, Ede Mesira Karti, he holds that all you need to, ha- to make an, an enactment of a get or any other consummation of contract legal is not the signatories in the shtar, but the witnesses who witness the transmission of the shtar. And that's what makes the get kosher. So he says, even l'chatchila that's kosher, and furthermore, if such a star was transmitted from one party to another, it would be a valid star, even to the point that it could be gover from the chasim ishubadim, even from encumbered property. And it would seem that the chachamim only disagree with Rabbi Elazar insofar as that it hasn't been ratified in Basin. But l'cha'ura, even Rabbi Meir, who argues with Rabbi Elazar in Gittin, should agree that once it's ratified that this is the guy's shtar, <coughs> why can't you collect from the chasa mishubadim with it? You see that according to Rebbe Lazar, it's, it's a completely valid shtar. So the Gemara answers, Shaini hasam debisha So the Gemara says it's different over there. He says there, in the case of Gitin, when the shtar was originally drawn up, it was originally drafted for the purposes of being a fully valid star at, at the time that the loan was made. In other words, when we drafted the note, the note was drafted for the purposes of being usable as a real <coughs> star. It was structured like a star, and the only thing that it was missing was witnesses' signatures. Here, this was never meant as a real star. It was meant as an <coughs> IOU, just proof that the loan was made, 
but it was never intended to be the instrument of collection. It was just there to prove that the loan was made. <laughs> now you want to upgrade it and have it ratified and based in, we can't, tr we can't transform something that was only meant as a proof of a loan and turn it into an instrument of collection. You can't do that after the fact. If you wanted to, let's say, draft a whole new star, that would be something else. And then they perhaps could create a shibut from the time that it's drafted. But to just convert something that was originally drafted, not as an instrument of collection, but rather just as proof of a loan, and then to convert it by taking it to base, then the Gemara says that everyone would agree that that will not work. And that's different from the case in Git. Okay, let's go on to the next Mishnah. So just to remind you, we had a machlokus in our Mishnah between Rabbi Yishmoel and Rabbi Shimon ben Nanas. What was the machlokus? The machlokus was um, when an Arev signs beneath the witness's signatures on a shtar, is that a legitimate guarantor or not? So Rabbi Shmuel originally said, it seems like it is, but the only thing is that since the witnesses are not signed on it, it can only collect from the chasim b'nei chor, and if you need to collect from the arev, you can only collect from his unencumbered property, not from his encumbered property. And Rabbi Shimon Benana says, no, the fact that it comes after the fact, any arev that comes after the fact is not a valid guarantor. And he gave the analogy, remember the analogy that he gave? He said, let's say you see someone, someone being strangled in the marketplace. The creditor is choking the guy. And the guy says, leave him alone. I don't want you to oppress him. Don't worry, I'll pay you. So he's only saying that, says Rav Shimon ben Anis, to get the oppressor off his back. So any kind of guarantor that comes after the fact, after the loan has already been enacted, is not a serious arrave. And Rabbi Shmuel concluded by saying, oh, everyone who wants to become a Talmud Chacham should study by Rabbi Shimon ben Anas. And it sounds, therefore, like Rabbi Shmuel is assenting to the argument of Rabbi Shimon ben Anas. Okay? So, Amar Rav, Koydem chisim shtaras kova minachasim yishubadim, la'achar chisim shtaras kova minachasim b'nei chorin. Rav seems to, however, to paskin like Rabbi Shmuel. He said, when the signature comes of the Arev comes before the witnesses sign, so then that's so powerful because it's, at, it, it's Mamish and Arev at the time that the loan is made, and therefore the Arev is included in the power of that star. So if the Lova defaults, you can collect even from the encumbered property of the Arev. But if his signature comes after the signatures of the witnesses, you can all, but you can still collect from the Arev, but only from the Nechas and B'nei Chor, the unencumbered. But at other times, Rav totally contradicted himself. And he said that even when the Arif signature comes before the witnesses' signatures, you still can only collect from the Ara from the Chasim B'nei Chorin on unencumbered property. So the Gemara says, Kasha the Rav the Rav. So how, Rav is contradicting himself. One place he says, that as long as the Arev signs before the witnesses, you can collect even from the Chassam Meshubadim. And here, he, Rav says the, just the opposite. You can only can be going from the Chassam B'nei Chorin. So the Gemara says, Lo Kasha, Ha de Kasav Be'i Ploni Arev, Ha de Kasav Be'i U Ploni Arev. The difference is like this. Very, very subtle. It depends how you put that piece of information that so-and-so is an Arev. If you say, so-and-so is an Arev, where it's not appended to the, the body of the contract, because you didn't use any conjunctions to demonstrate that this is a part and parcel of the, the body of the contract text, so then who knows if the witness is meant to sign on that? That could be a totally separate clause. And maybe the witnesses are only signing on the first part, not on the second part. But if you say, uploni Arev, and... So it's clear that this is, an, this is part and parcel of the whole text of the shtar. And so whatever this, the witnesses are signing on, if they're signing on the first part, they're also <laughs> signing on the second part. And then you can collect from the encumbered property of the Ari. I was very bothered by this Gemara because I re remember a Gemara that we saw just a few weeks ago that said that there can be no substantive new information on the bottom line of the shtar. 
if it wasn't written before. So it was difficult for me to understand. How could you write on the bottom line of the shtar, uploni arev, and have it be taken seriously? I mean, that is a substantive difference. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, there's no guarantee on the shtar, now there's a guarantee on the shtar. So I couldn't understand this. The only thing that I can suggest, I haven't researched it thoroughly, but the only thing that I can suggest is, remember that the Gemara had qualified that statement, and it said that if the last line says, v'hakol shavir v'kayam, that everything is finished at this point, then you could add something on the last line before the words v'hakol shavir v'kayam. So maybe that's the kind of shtar that we're talking about over here. Anyway, Rabbi Yochanan Omar, echad zeh ve'echad zeh, eno goi ve'ele minachasim b'nei chorin. Ve'afel gav, because of be'u ploni arev. So Rabbi Yochanan says, in all cases, even when the arev signature, uh, or, or, or the words of the arev appear before the witness's signature, <coughs> Uh, you can only collect from the chasim b'nei chorin of the arev, not from his encumbered property. And the Gemara surmises that Rabbi Yochanan would hold that way, even if the word, the letter vav appears, even if it says uploni arev. So he's arguing with Rav. He's arguing with Rav. So Masiv Rav, so Rav says, but that doesn't stem with something else that Rabbi Yochanan said. Because it says, Edem ha-chasumen al she'ila sholom beget pasol, chayshinen shema al she'ila sholom chasmum. That if witnesses are signatories on a salutation in a get or in a star, that star is puzzle. Why? Now, what we're talking about over here is that you have a full body of text in the contract, and at the end it says, and we wish everyone the best of peace, right? At the end of the star. And then the witnesses sign it. They offer a salutation at the end of the star, and then they sign it. That star is now null and void. No salutations at the end of a star. Why? Because we're choshesh that maybe when the witnesses signed, all they saw was the salutation, and they're only committing themselves to the salutation, which is Shalom al Yisrael, right? Whatever it said before, we don't care, but Shalom al Yisrael, I'm ready to sign on that. So that's why you can't have any salutations <coughs> at the end of a star. But Vaamar Rabbi Avahu Lididim, if partially mean to Rabbi Yochanan, Shi'ilo Pasol, this Shi'ilo Kasher. But Rabbi Yochanan had explained it to us. That's only when there's no conjunction of the, the, the letter Vav to connect the salutation to the body of the text. But when there is a, a conjunction of Vav to connect the salutation to the text, then it's clear that the Adam were signing on everything. And it's a valid star. So how come over here? Rabbi Yochanan doesn't distinguish between a vav and not a vav. So, hachanami dekas of ploni arev. So the Gemara says, no, he does distinguish. He's only talking about a case where there's no letter vav. But when there is a letter vav, then Rabbi Yochanan would agree that you can collect even from the nechas and mishubadim of the arev. So, ihachi hainu de rav. Well, if that's the case, then how is he any different from rav? Rav seems to be saying the same thing, that if there's a distinction between whether there's a vav or not a vav. So, Ema v'chein amar Rabbi Yechanan. So the Gemara says, no, you didn't understand. Rabbi Yochanan is not disagreeing with Rav. He's agreeing with Rav. Just like Rav holds a distinction between with a vav and not a vav, so too Rabbi Yochanan agrees to that distinction when there's a vav, it's a valid part of the text, and therefore you can collect from the chasim mishubadim of the arev. When there's no vav, you have to be choshesh that maybe the witnesses overlooked that part and only signed on the top part. Maisa ubalifnei Rabbi Yishmael v'chulei. So there was once a maisa, and even though Rabbi Yishmael paskins that you could collect from the arev, even though his signature was below the witnesses, Rabbi Shimon ben Nanas told him that you shouldn't do that. So Amar Rabbi Barbarchana, Amar Rabbi Yechanan, Afal Pi Shekiles Rabbi Yishmael es Ben Nanas, Halacha Kemoso, a surprising statement. Even though Rabbi Yishmael praised Rabbi Shimon Ben Nanas and said we should all learn from him, we still don't paskin like Rabbi Shimon Ben Nanas, and instead we paskin like Rabbi Yishmael. Rabbi Yishmael was being very humble, but Lamaisa we paskin like him, and that even though the Arev is beneath the witnesses, you can still collect from that Arev. So Ibayelahu bechanuk ma. Mali Omar Rabbi Yishmael. So now the question is like this. Okay, we know that we paskin like Rabbi Yishmael in a case where the Arev signature is below the witnesses. But what about that analogy that Rabbi Shimon Ben Nanas gave? 
Remember, the whole argument of Shemim is it's an arev after the fact is not an arev. So we paskin like Rabbi Shmuel that as long as he's on the shtar, even if it's below the witnesses, it's okay. But what about the arev after the fact that Shemim Benanus was talking about, where you see a guy in the marketplace being strangled by his creditor, and you say, stop, I'll pay. So would Rabbi Shmuel disagree in that case also, and would, and would we paskin that that person has to be taken seriously and his commitment to pay is legally binding? Or would Rabbi Shmuel agree to Rabbi Shimon ben Anas in that case and the halacha would be that that's not to be taken seriously? So Tosh Ma'ad, Omer Rabbi Yaakov, Omer Rabbi Yechanan, Chalakai Rabbi Shmuel Af Bechanuk. And so first of all, Rabbi Shmuel disagreed with Rabbi Shimon ben Anas in that case initially. And therefore he held that if you see a guy being strangled and you say, stop and I'll pay, then legally you've committed yourself to pay. So halacha kamos vein halacha kamos. So do we pass him like that or not? So tosh matachi also rabbi omer rabbi yechanan chalakai rabbi shmuel af bechanan ba halacha kamos af bechanan. He says taka we pass him like rabbi shmuel there. If a person well, for whatever reason, even though he hates to see people oppressed, but once he makes that declaration, stop, I will pay. He's legally bound to that declaration. However, here we have a qualification. But Shmuel says that's only if the guy says stop and I'll pay and then an actual Kenyan is made between the strangler and the Arif. In other words, the Arif's holding the, the debtor in one hand <laughs> by the throat and he says, here, take the handkerchief <laughs> you know, right, in the other hand. Right? In that situation, because an actual Kenyan is made, we, hold, we take him seriously. But a a verbal declaration to get the get, get off his back already is and I'll pay is not to be taken seriously without a king. So the Gemara says before seeing when the transaction is not after. Well the witnesses have to see it. So if there are Adam that see it, so then he's an Ari. So Michlal da Arif Baal Maloboy Kenyan. So that implies that a regular Arif can just make a regular verbal declaration in front of witnesses without a Kenyan and that indebts him to, if it's, as long as it's at the time of the loan, that makes him a legal guarantor. But upliga de Rav Nachman, the Amar Rav Nachman, arev de beistin hu de lo boy kinin, haba alma boy kinin. But Rav Nachman disagrees with that. Rav Nachman holds that an arev always needs to make a kinin in, always, in order to be a legally binding guarantor, unless, one thing, unless it's done in front of beistin. If in front of Bastin a loan is made, and then the guy makes a verbal declaration, uh, Levy makes a verbal declaration, I shall be the guarantor on this loan, there's something in law called consideration. We've used that word many, many times in learning of the Bubbas. What does consideration mean? That as long as I am receiving something in return for my volunteering of services, even though it's only a verbal declaration of that offering, I'm legally bound to that because I'm getting something in return. That's what consideration means in secular law. In this situation, even though normally a verbal declaration to be an arif cannot be held legally binding, but if I'm getting something in return for that legal declaration, then it is legally binding. What am I getting by, by being declared as the legal guarantor in a based in? The prestige. Based in it recognizes me as a, as a responsible adult and someone who they can trust. And because of that, because I'm getting that prestige and honor and respectability and based in, I, that in itself is the consideration that allows this declaration to be legally binding. So according to Rav Nachman, you, in order to become a legally bound Arev, you have to make a Kenyan unless the declaration is made in based in, in which case all that is needed is verbal and not anything more. And we'll hold the rest for our Siyam. Michael, do we have a date for our Siyam yet? Um, nothing fixed, uh, but uh, we, we could have it on either the Thursday or the Sunday of the nine days. Sounds good to me. Which, which dates? Uh, the Thursday or the Sunday of the night? Well, we should probably do it as, as sooner than later, no? The barbecue. Mm -hmm. Which one is sooner, the Thursday then, yes? Yeah. So, so then why don't we do it, uh, we do it uh, next Thursday? Is it a, a week from Thursday then, yes? Okay. So I'll see what Patreon can arrange. Okay. So Hashem, please. If, does that work for everyone? We're not ready. We're not ready yet. Oh. Sorry, we're starting Sanhedrin. Oh, okay.
<laughs> you want to get out of here? No. <laughs> okay. Let's open up our mission. <laughs> yes, Mr. Freeman. The Gemara says, Rav Yochanan. Aha, I hear. In other words, to put Rav Yochanan on the same level. Is right. Good, okay. Let's take a look at the mission in Sanhedrin. We're only going to do the first few lines until the wide lines. Dine Mominus Bishlosha. Whenever there's going to be an adjudication of financial cases, so you need a minimum of three dayon. Gezelos vachavolos bishlosha. Anytime a person denies having in his possession something that was entrusted to him, he's deemed to be a goslin if he's discovered to be lying, and his case must be adjudicated by three dayon. Any t- case of damages adjudicated by three dayon. Nezek vachatsi nezek. In a case of goring, whether it's a, an established gore or an unestablished gore where the, where the damage would be only half of the normal damage, or any other kind of case of penalty, where let's say there's a case of geneva, where a person, a ganav, has to pay double, or a case of geneva where not only does he steal the animal but butchers it or sells it, in the case of a sheep, he has to pay five to, uh, four times the amount. In a case of a cow, he has to pay five times the amount. So because there's additional knas, the chiddush of the Mishnah is, is that you still have to do that in front of three. Ha'ones v'hamafata v'hamotzi shem bishlosha divar rebi meir. These are also cases of knas, of penalty payments established by the Torah. In cases of rape, seduction, and slander. The case of rape, as the Torah says, you shall assess the rapist 50 silver shekels. The case of seduction, the same thing. The case of Motsi Shemra, where a man, after spending the night with his bride, this says I, she was not a basula, and therefore I accuse her of committing a, adultery after she became betrothed to me. And then it's discovered that he was lying. He has to pay 100 silver pieces. All of these cases are adjudicated by a basin of three, according to Rebbe Meir. But v'chachamim <coughs> only Motsi Shemra be'esem u'shlosha, but the Chachamim say that a case of slander requires 23 judges, which is the number of judges you need to judge on capital cases. Why? Because even though vis-a-vis the accuser, the man, the stakes are only monetary restitution, but the stakes for the woman, the bride, is capital. Because if she's proven to, be, to have committed adultery through his accusation, then she'll be put to death for having committed adultery. So, therefore, it needs 23 judges. Makos bishlosha, uh, when, a, when a basin is going to administer any penalty of lashes, let's say they, a guy was witness eating chazer, they bring him to basin to determine whether he needs malchus or not, you need three dayon. Mishum Rabbi Shmuel Amru Basra Mishlosha, but Rabbi Shmuel says you need 23. Well, Gemara will explain why. Ibor achodesh bishlosha, Ibor hashana bishlosha, divor Rabbi Meir. That when you want to, when a basin wishes to declare a month to be 30 days instead of 29 days, or if they wish to declare a year to be a leap year of 13 months with an Adar Shani instead of just a 12 month year, that needs a basin of three. But Rabbi Shimon and Gamliel Omer Bishlosha Maschilinu Vachamisha Nosin Venosin, the Gomerin Bishiva. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel disagrees with Rabbi Meir and he says, you start with three judges. You deliberate with five judges, and you issue your judgment with seven judges. But the imgamru begimel meuberis, but bidievet, if they only had three judges the entire time, then it, it, the, their judgment still stands, and the month or the year is considered to have been changed, to have been altered. So, of course, this is only the tip of the iceberg. We're only just getting started. But that's a good way to get started, and we'll hold it here. Ready for Kaddish, Rabbi Have a great day, Rabbi Chanan, Ben Akasha Omer, Ratzah.